Most of you watching have already seen JonTron's video on Takeshi's Challenge. It's a great video, and it's the only glimpse many of us had into one of Retro Gaming's most infamous titles. But, well... In order to keep up the laughs, he rushes through his summary of the game, neglecting to mention an entire section, and he doesn't explain any of the steps, like why you need to divorce your wife, or get blackout drunk, which is to divorce your wife. It's a shame, because the losing conditions are some of the highlights of this game. This game was the original Kaizo Trap. First, I'll cover the steps necessary to beat the game, and then we can break down what happens if we don't do them. Steps to win Takeshi's Challenge Talk to your boss and collect your bonus. Leave and re-enter, resign from job, collect severance fee. Go to the Culture Center, learn to speak Hintabo and how to hang glide. Go to the Left District and enter Travel Higawa to purchase a ticket to the South Pacific. Go to the Right District, next to the Bank and Theater, then the Karaoke Bar. Sit at the bar. Have a drink. Another. Reject the third, and accept the song. Select the ballad, then Reign of Tears. As the song plays, press A on the second controller a bunch. It doesn't matter when. If you are asked to do an encore, sing it twice more. Otherwise, your streak is broken. Sing it again until you get three in a row. You'll be told to stop hogging the mic the third time. Choose to brawl, then beat everyone up. Yes, even the waitress. Although save them for last, only three NPCs can be on screen at once. An old man will appear and give you a map. This prompts six options. Choose to soak it in water. Leave it for more than five minutes, but less than ten? Then use the mic. Now for the most important step of the entire guide. Beat up the old man. Sit back down at the karaoke bar. Get blackout drunk from liquor. Avoid the violent wife and kids and flee. Divorce her and pay alimony. Go back to your former workplace, crouch by the first potted plant, and pick up the 100,000 yen. Now go fly to the South Pacific. The airport is to the right of the bank. Go to the bank after landing and exchange your currency and withdraw. I recommend you sleep in the deluxe hotel room twice for a health refill. Purchase poetry from the miage. Purchase a canteen and a gun from the equipment store. I recommend you equip the gun. Go to the resort and select the fifth option, hang gliding. Do the shmup section and land on the fourth island. You do this by flying right on top of the ground without touching it, doing so kills you, and be below the gust of wind that spawns the tile above you. Be close to the middle right edge of the screen beforehand or you won't be able to make it in time. Don't enter any huts and just keep going right until you see a tent on a hill. It will be past the jungle and first mountain. Just once, you can get health by pressing up at the first jungle tree. Use a high jump by jumping while crouching to reach the hut. Talk to the hermit in the hut. Give him a present and select the canteen. Go back through the jungle to the village chief's hut. It's the one right in front of the jungle. Give him a present and select poetry. Do not pause, just exit the house or you'll get a game over. Go through the jungle again to get to the first hill you see. Do a high jump to land on an invisible lip on the top left of the mountain. Do a regular jump to the right. You should be two tiles higher and on the top of the mountain visually. Crouch. If that didn't teleport you, inch right and crouch again, and repeat until it works or you fall off the mountain. In the cave, you need to crouch in certain spots to progress. They're towards the bottom of the screen, never on floating platforms. Use the pause trick to get rid of enemies if you need to, or press A and B three times while dying to revive at 64 health. Equip the gun if you forgot, as it does a lot more damage and is a ranged attack. Obviously. Stay on the windscreen for five minutes to receive your reward. Nice job. Okay. You quit your job because it gives you money. We only need a lot of cash at the start, so we don't need to optimize our spending much. So we'll quit now because it's convenient. You learn the Hintabo language so you can understand the NPCs after the shmup section. This isn't strictly necessary since your responses never actually change, but it makes things a bit easier. And, of course, we need to learn hang gliding because otherwise we cannot reach the island. But aren't there four other options to reach the island? Why are we choosing the hang gliding anyways? Well, the scuba gear and boat come with the obvious downside of being bound to the water, 
Not only does this mean you are unable to avoid the birds dive-bombing you, but since this is a side-scroller, you can't get past the first island. The hot air balloon can only move left or right, so you can never land or dodge the UFO's bullets. Finally, we have the Cessna. Everything about this seems like the obvious choice. It's a plane. We can move in any direction we please, and it makes this section a breeze. Well, remember, we are headed to an island without technology. There's no runway to land on. You'll just crash. So hang glider it is. Yay. Naturally, the only place with a treasure is the South Pacific. But we do have an option to purchase a ticket to Europe, the USA, Africa, or the Middle East. So what happens then? The plane explodes. It just does. Also, going to Africa costs over 2 billion yen? So, if we know where the treasure is, why do we need the map? Well, that's because holding it is the only way to prevent the plane from exploding. The ticket blessing line must be doing a lot of heavy lifting. This is also why we need this particular map. The other two, the one from the bookstore and pachinko parlor, are forgeries that do not grant safe travels. Why do we need to beat up the old man? Well, this is single-handedly the most evil thing in the game. If you don't, then when you go to collect the treasure at the end of the game, he will appear and steal it from you. This causes a game over at the last possible second, and you will really need to replay the entire game because of this. This was a Kaizo Trap decades before Kaizo Traps. The reason you need to get Blackout drunk is because it's the only way to divorce your wife. If you go home without getting smashed, then you will smash. Then you won't be given the option to divorce her. And we need to divorce her, because after the shmup section, she will magically appear and teleport you home, telling you to quit this nonsense. I also fudged it earlier, the same thing happens with your boss if you don't quit your job. If either of these happens, you can actually continue with the game, but you will need to redo the hang glider section. Interestingly, this reveals plane tickets are reusable, and this makes it possible to afford a ticket to Africa by gambling at the casino in the South Pacific to gain an infinite amount of money with enough luck, i.e. save states. You can also buy literally everything available this way. Oh, and we pay the wife alimony, because if you select Punch, she is literally invincible. This one's obvious, but if you don't exchange your currency, then you cannot buy anything. Attempting to do so will have shopkeepers tell you, we don't accept your money here. If we can always revive with half health, then why would we sleep in the hotel to heal? Well, our health determines how many bullets we can take in the shmup section, so we want all we can get. And obviously we can't revive here, it doesn't... Th th there's nobody. <laughs> we don't enter any huts, as there's only one way out once you enter. It's by holding up in this specific spot and then you get teleported to the resort and have to redo the shmup section. Death would have been preferable. The poetry is necessary to receive the sacred stone from the village chief, and the canteen is needed to convince the hermit to convince the village chief to accept gifts in the first place. This is why entering the pachinko parlor, wasting 100 balls, spamming the mic when you're low on them, beating up the yakuza that enter just one, then you can hide behind the counter until they leave, to receive 5,000 balls, which you can't just buy without playing the game, because when you do it overrides your previous balls. All that was necessary to purchase a shamisen, as it requires 4,000 pachinko balls, but all of that, plus learning how to play it, can be skipped. If you just don't enter the hut before giving the chief the canteen, then you never get put into the boiling pot, and thus won't need to escape with a mind-bendingly awesome shamisen, performance. If you do end up in the pot and attempt the obvious solution of performing a native social dance, then you will wow the village chief so much that he marries his daughter to you off-screen, resulting in a soft lock. Finally, you wait on the final screen, because it prompts a message telling you not to take this stupid game so seriously. Joke's on you. I made a video about it. Wait. You know what? This game's gotten me into a mean spirit. Let's take out all this anger on JonTron. Because, 
wow, he really did not do good research. And yes, I checked. The most helpful guide for this game was released June 18th, 2008. So I don't want to hear any, oh, but there probably weren't any guides, because yes, there was. I'll admit, the guide didn't make the optional nature of the pachinko parlor crystal clear, but you would still realize it if you read the entire guide, which he did. This, this is the guide he used, I can tell from the steps he follows, and saw it was only needed for the section marked optional. Also, he didn't even do this optional bit right. The guide clearly stated, choose the least amount of balls, 100 balls for $500. You're then supposed to go to the pachinko parlor and buy 500 balls and lose them. And he chose the option five times higher than that. Guess he just skimmed and only saw the $500 bit, but come on, man. It is possible to heal before the hotel. However, this wasn't listed on the TV tropes or cutting room floor pages at the time, so I'll admit this is a low blow. You can press A and B simultaneously three times to revive while dying anywhere but the hang glider section. This was known at the time, although I only saw it mentioned in Deceased Crab's wonderful playthrough of the game. Check it out if you want to see it in full. This trivializes health. However, this can be argued as another low blow, since it seems like John was trying to go in blind, and in that case, you are not figuring this out. This is just a nitpick, but you can avoid the Yakuza in town with well-timed high jumps. Even if you don't avoid damage entirely, you'll still probably half the damage you take, and I never once saw him high jump in his footage, you know, despite him complaining about the Yakuza attacks. You do not have to sing into the microphone and it is not stupidly precise. This is an NES game, John. It is not that sophisticated. <laughs> I know this is the case because you can literally bind the microphone to a single button by holding down and A on the second controller at the same time. This isn't an emulator feature, it is part of the game. Afterwards, pressing A on said controller is identical to using the microphone. It's like the Wii Fit jogging game. All you have to do is shake the controller, but it tells you to put it in your pocket and run for immersion. And I've saved the worst for last. Passwords work. No strings attached. So you don't need to redo everything to retry the hang glider section. I mean, in the video itself, he goes to the password screen, makes a joke about it, but then never even tries to see if it works. Pause anywhere, select end, and it will give you a password. Inputting it gives you back your health, items, money, and remembers your location. I figured this out without looking it up, and I've barely played any NES games in my life. John has played many and couldn't. So, now that that's out of my system, I'd like to remind you it was still a very funny, well-made video. Uranus is severed ball set. Just know that it's far from an optimal way to beat the game, and it fails to showcase a lot of it too. The only reason it took John two years to make is because he's a dumbus. Hey there! Thanks for sitting through the first video in my attempting to make this a job arc. My next two videos will also be about Takeshi's challenge, because there's actually a ton I haven't touched on yet. Afterwards, I'll move on to something else. It won't be related to NES games, but it will be a few weird games that you may vaguely recognize, kind of like Takeshi's Challenge. I have a Kofi, which, if you don't know, is a better Patreon, so I'd appreciate any support there. For now, it's just a tip jar. Anyways, have a good day or night, viewer.